Okay, so uh, some students asking about, uh, uh, you know, midterm. So we are still in the process of marking. Uh, if you see any grade that, that's partial marks, okay, so we still have two questions that yet to be marked. Okay, so uh, so you're, we are expecting to be uh, finishing marking by the end of this week. Right, right now, the, the marking is not finalized. So if you see any updates, uh, so that's not finalized. I think uh, we will still continue to wait because we still expect half of the other half of the students to join. Okay, we will wait for maybe three minutes. Okay, uh, we should begin. Right, so, although there are still some students, should be coming. Right, so, uh, let's recap. Last time we talked about, uh, you know, routing, right? So, we know that there are two levels of routing. Uh, so, this set of slides focus on intradomain routing. Okay, we also have interdomain routing. Right, so if you look at the uh, protocols we are be talking about, uh, the first two, by the way, we are still at an network layer. We will later uh, go to transport layer, TCP later. Okay. So in the network layer, we have the uh, RIP and the OSPF. Okay. They are based on different ideas. RIP is a distant vector, right? Uh, OSPF is based on so-called link state. We'll see uh, link state today. RIP we covered in the last lecture on Monday, right? On Wednesday, we canceled the class because of the Stream weather as uh, uh, required by UAB. Okay, and the BGP 
is inter uh, interdomain protocol. Okay, these two are intradomain protocol. We'll, we'll discuss BGP in the next set of slides. Okay, uh, for the current set of slides, we are talking about the intradomain protocol. Okay, the, 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 the way to differentiate between them is a, you know, we have a concept called AS, right? Autonomous systems. Okay, and the intradomain routing is within the same autonomous system, right? And the interdomain is between different autonomous systems, right? So, you, so for example, you can route through a packet from AS1 to AS3 via AS2. Or you say, hey, I don't want to route through AS2. Okay, then I, I can route directly to AS2. So these are by BGP, which we will see in the slides, uh, later slides, okay, not the current slides. And the routers, let's say in, in interior routers, are those routers inside the same AS. And uh, BGP border gateway, right? Protocol. Okay, so these are on the border of your AS, which means you have at least a port linked to some router outside your AS. Well, interior means totally inside. Okay, and uh, we we briefly look at why we need the AS, right? Basically, it's autonomous, allows you uh, your institution or your organization to have your own AS configured as you like. Okay. And you can hide some details of how internally, how you route, let's say within UAB, without uh, exposing information to the outside, right? And so, uh, yeah, so how to routing through a gra uh, uh, routing through, through from A to F, for example, right? So, so we really want to minimize the cost, right? The cost can be measured either in terms of time, like the time delay, and it can be uh, also compute like a cost. Right? So BGP usually we look at the cost, but within the institution, we really look at minimize the latency okay, of the transmission. And uh, again, basically it's a graph theory model. Right? So we want to find the shortest path between any two points. Okay. And uh, how, how do we route them? Right? So we talked about uh, uh, intradomain protocols. Right? So we talked about two methods. One is called distance vector where every router will maintain a vector of distance to every other router, okay? But the difference from link state, the second method, OSPF, is that you only exchange your vectors with your neighbors, right? With those routers that you are directly linked, okay? But link state, actually, you do this kind of BFS, right? You, you back propagate, uh, you, you, you flood your, your packet to all the routers, right? So you don't just communicate with your neighbors, you communicate all the way to you reach everyone in your AS. Okay, so this is a, it's a concept of flooding, and as long as it's reachable, then you just flood. Okay, so they are totally different ideas. Okay, we will see those uh, OSPF and the linked data algorithm later. Okay, so if we look at from the shortest path algorithm, they are also based on different algorithms. So if you look at distant vector algorithm, it's really based on the Belmont Ford algorithm for all pair shortest path computation, which means for every two node, how do we compute the shortest path? Right. So if you look at uh, uh, Bell, Bellman Ford, it's actually a matrix, in, like a multiplication kind of operation, which uh, in our case, it's a distributed implementation of that, right? So each one holds a column of the matrix, right? Well, in the link state uh, algorithm, it's really running the Dijkstra algorithm, which computes from a single source, let's say this current router to everyone else with the shortest path, okay? As uh, so a result of a Dijkstra, usually a shortest path tree. And the last time we look at the distance uh, vector router, the reason we say it's distance vector because we really have, you know, a vector of cost, right? Well, for each each destination, other than myself, right? If I'm router C, so I have A, B, D, E, F. I don't have C, okay? And last time we talked about the solution, right? So you just wait. Uh, if you are already stabilized or you start with no information, right? So what you do is you, if you, you you are just newly connected, of course, you need to send your, your act to others, okay? Because, you know, it's the same, it's the first time you are in, right? You need to notify others of your existence, okay? Basically, you will be probing, right? after you, you get connected, you will be probing your adjacent links and tell every neighbor how long you estimate the, the, the length to be, right? For all the others should be infinite, okay? This is where we start initially, right? So, it later, if you stabilize it, let's say the short paths have been converged or computed. But if you, you find, hey, there's some change of the cost, right? some links suddenly become slower, again, you need to notify others. If, let's say, for example, if this link, 
that three becomes five, then B and a D were detected because they have a port linked on there, right? And they need to notify everyone, right? Send this vector to everyone to trigger the propagation again. Okay. So then uh, once other people will receive your message, it will be recomputing distance. Okay. So if you can see that uh, a, a router is a kind of hibernating, right? So it's uh, not sleeping, okay, if, you, uh, if, if they get no message, right? And they are distance, they detect no change, okay? Otherwise, as long as they, they get updates from a neighbor, they need to handle that and see whether there will be a smaller path, right, to any destination going through that neighbor. Okay, so this is one condition that will trigger D to become active. Another case is D probe and find, hey, these edge values here, right? So changed, then D will also update its distance vector and then notify it. And because this is one way, uh, if you look at last time, our example, this is one way, right? So the distance will only go smaller. Right? If you look at eight, right? So previous so infinity become eight, okay? And if you look at seven, next update, it will only go smaller, right? Yeah, three. This will always go down, at least by one, right? And finally it will reach the converged shuttered path, okay? So it will always end. So this is the iterative process. This actually runs the Bama Ford algorithm, but the issue is how long it converges, right? Let's assume this case. Right? So B, the link adjacent to B, for, uh, the cost originally very small, right? Take, let's say four seconds to, to reach to A. Now suddenly it becomes super fast, okay? For some reason, maybe less congestion from other places between routing through A, B, right? Suddenly uh, A and B, the, the, the delay, right, becomes only one. What will happen here, right? Previously B to A, let, let's take it, okay? Previously B uh, from node B to A, I think the cost is C, right? Okay. Uh, it's four, mostly, okay? Previously it's four, okay? Now B find, hey, now I, I update to one, right? So I, I need to update my value. Of course, then I need to notify everyone else about this chain, right? Well, do this. So what happens is, hey, this will reach C for the moment, okay? Then node C will see, hey, originally node C has this value five, okay, to reach A. The reason is very simple. Uh, you know, C to reach A, one road is 50, right? The other is one plus four, which is, okay? Now you tell me that I route through B, right? Originally route through B. Now you tell me that, hey, now uh, you have a path from B to A, which is one, okay? Right, B to A now becomes one. And uh, so I also know that uh, uh, from C to B is one, right? And so I know that C to B and then from B to A becomes two. Right? I should upload, up, upgrade, update this two, right? Because this originally is five. So I will take the minimum of five and two, and which become two, right? So update it to two, okay? By that time, you see this, this distance vector also, also updated, right? Okay. So if that happens, so this guy, C, also need to notify others, right? So let's use this arrow, okay. right. because it has something updated, okay? Notify its neighbor. Again, it only com uh, communicate with neighbors, okay? So this will, what will happen is that, uh, you know, the algorithm will terminate, uh, because, you know, this distance is two, right? But already you, you can see B's to every else is one. So there's no way two plus something will be make this distance smaller. Okay, this is already small. So there, there will be no change. Okay. And similarly, if you look at the other parts, you will see that C will also no change. Okay. So by this time it converges. There's no no more change. Right? So because you know this distance vector is not changed, so A will not, not broadcast to others, right? And no one is broadcast to others. This stabilizes. Next time, if there's another change, then this adjustment will continue. So what we see is that you can see the, the propagation is super fast. Right? So you can see there's only one update, one update for each row, each node, okay? So this is what we say, good news travels fast. That's pretty good, right? So if you have a slow link, suddenly it become fast, but you will immediately update to that shortest as well. But let's assume that uh, now you have another chain. Right? So suddenly this becomes super slow for some reason. Maybe a E and F are sending lots of things that has to be routing through A and B, okay? 
this becomes 60. Then what will happen? Let's take a look, right? So firstly, uh, because B has, a, B has a distance change, right? And uh, let me see. So B originally is four and a one, four to A, right? Because the original is four, not consistent, right? And now, uh, previously C has a distance vector saying, hey, you go from uh, node C to node A, right? Is what? It's five, okay? So previously we say, hey, from node C to node A, that's a cost is five. Of course, this five is actually one plus four, right? But, but this distance vector, you don't see that. Okay, you don't see that. You just know, hey, there's a cost five. Now, now that you know, uh, let's see, I think there should be a link here. There's no link. So, so, so basically, this is what we want to say. Okay, so this vector, right? So, uh, this vector will be propagated to here, right? So, and because you know. Uh, we know that go from C to A is five, okay? Because of this entry, right? And then if you go from A to B, uh, let me see how to say this. So this is B to A, right? Go from B to A. Now we can go through this, right? We first go from B to C and C to A, right? So B to C is one and C to A is five. So we think this is six, okay? Right, but, but you know, B does not know, right? So this five is actually routing through the oldest four, okay? Right, so this, this is the pitfall, why it, it will think, hey, C to A has a distance five, so now I, I go through C, route through C. Right? You can see we route through C. The next, this is N is the next uh, route, route we go, okay? And we think there will be a path that reaches A with cost five, okay? So we will have cost six. Any question about this? Again, so the, the problem is uh, pretty clear. So because you know, B will be routing through, uh, B will be routing through C, right? But originally we think C to A is five, okay? Right, B, C, A then becomes six. But actually C routes through A becomes five is because of all the four, right? C one plus four, okay? Which is no longer exists. Okay, that's why there's a problem here. So then this, uh, so this thing, well, uh, because of the update of this six, right, it will be probably to C again, okay? So what C will see, let, let's take a look at, okay? So C originally thinks C can go to A, right? Via B at the cost of five, okay? Now C goes to A, earlier is via B, okay? Now it's B thinks, tells C that Hey, I go to A, I have a cost of six, okay? Actually, this six is routing through C, right? But, but assume we just look at the cost. We don't look at M, okay? I just route through six, right? So what does this mean? This means C can first go to B with cost one and then B to A with cost six, right? So, so I, in C says, I, I will update this to seven and the next is B, I will go to B, okay? Now, because of this update, it will be sending to the adjacent, you know, distance vector to B, and the B will receive this distance vector, right? So B will receive this copy, and then B will see, hey, uh, so uh, from B go to A, right? Originally, my my distance six that goes through C, okay. Now C tells me, C tells me that you know. C's distance to A has been up to the seven, okay? But my, I route through C, I still have one. So this is just up to A, okay? So that's, you can see this will go, go, go all the way there. They go to like, a, you know, if C to A is 50, right, then it will stop, okay? Because this is, right? but, but if you look at uh, uh, the C to A, but if you look at B to A, right? So this will all the way go to 60. So this will frustrate a lot 
to, uh, into a go on like a so-called counter infinity problem. This is very, very big, like almost infinite. It will always be going on that direction. Okay. So what's the problem here? All right, so why this is happening? So this is happening because, you know, uh, again, this is using our previous, so if you look at our algorithm, we have two solutions, okay? So if you are already previously raw through V, right? And now I, you send to me because your, 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 dest your distance destination has changed, okay? Then I will, okay, so we're, we are running this. So we're not running this thing. This thing means we find a shorter route through another V, okay? It's a V prime for them, okay? So that's why if you look at this example here, you can see that uh, the distance is always the uh, route is through C, okay? Except for the first time. So, so it's always routing through B. So this is always routing through B. It's just the same, hey, if I route through B, but now your estimate to A is changing, okay? Then I should update the second half distance, okay? I'm going up. Well, this going up is slow because this thing is again estimated from here, as a from C's list, which, but, you know, this can, can go on forever, right? So good news travels fast, bad news travels slow. Any question here? So that's a, a weakness of distance factor. So a solution to that is called a poison reverse. Let's see what does that mean, okay? So here, if you look at the logic here, if C routes through B to get to A, right? So C, if, if C wants to go to A, but it will route through B, right? Because four plus one is five, this is 50, okay? Now C will tell B, right? If, you know, because C goes to B, then goes to A. That means A, B, right? If B wants to go to A, it shouldn't go to C, right? Because even C wants to go to A, it goes through B, right? So which means B, A is gonna be shorter than C, B, A, okay? Right, so then if B wants to go to A, it shouldn't route through C, okay? Right, which means B should not, should not route through C today, right? Otherwise it's unreasonable. So what it means that C need to tell B that DCA is infinite. You don't rush through me, okay? But I rush through you, then you should not rush through me, okay? Uh, to, to, to A, right? C will always, uh, this basically, if you, you tell B this, right? B will not try to route, route to A through C, okay? Because B to A is the second half, right? This is the first half. Of course, B A is gonna be closer than C. So this is the idea. This is called a poison reverse, right? So we don't allow it to reverse, okay? If C goes B to A, then B cannot go to C to A again, okay? C will tell, hey, no, don't, don't go through me. I go through you, right? So this is the idea. Uh, I see a chat question. Uh, there's a question regarding what's DCA, right? So, uh, Okay, so here's the so DCA is this uh, distance. Okay, so the estimate distance, if you look at here. So, so this basically it's a distance from here to here. It's, it's a value in the distance column, right? So for example, for this column, right, it's, a, it's this DBA, right? D from source, which is B, the destination is A, okay? D means distance, it's okay? And the, the notation is a little bit inconsistent, right? We should use C, C is plus. And is the next value, okay? So, but, but the meaning is the same. Uh, it is okay. I think uh, there are students asking this question. I think uh, we use D as better, right? Because they have a C already. Okay, yeah. I think uh, the student okay with that. Yeah. So, so now let's look at this reverse, a uh, pause on the reverse, right? Uh, what will happen here, okay? So now assume we, we change this value to 60. Of course, you know, B will detect this is 60, right? And of course this is 60, but previously we are not taking 60, if you remember, because we, we find a shorter path, right? Because we find C to A is, is five, right? Because C to A, or, or old value is one plus four, okay? But now C to A is infinity, right? C doesn't allow you, when C tell you, but because C is routing through B here, okay? C will tell you it's infinity, not five, okay? This five value will not be given to you. 
instead of infinity. Then if you compare infinity and a 60, of course it will take a 60, okay? So it quickly converge to, to the true value here, okay? And when you stand the 60 uh, to Roger C, right? So this distance factor B to C, B, uh, C will see, hey, now I cannot route through, you know, through B. Originally I route through B, right? For the first half is still A, so you can detect it. The second half B to A, original value is four right now. So that's why it's five. But now it has been updated to 60, right? So one plus 60 is 61. But I have another route, right? So maybe the distance vector is sent through A to, to me, okay? Or I can cache the old value. It's 50, okay? So 61 and 50, of course I would choose 50. Right? And uh, I directly route to A, okay? I would not route through B. So you can see these two steps, everything uh, almost converges, right? So there's the last step. Now, now, you know, B currently is taking this step, right? But it appears there's a shorter step from it, one to 50, right? So it will become 51, okay? So, so once we go to, uh, once this distance vector is propagated to B, to know B, right? so all the way to here, B will compare the 60 value with this value, right? So this value tells B that, hey, this is 650, okay? And B will see, hey, Hey, this is one right now, I think, and the plus 50, 51, which is smaller than 60. So I will update this to 51 and I will route to C to A, okay, to that same thing. I will not directly go to right? So after this step, actually, you can see there's no more change, okay, it's converged. All right, so this is uh, so called a rever reverse, poison the reverse, right? So, which means if, if you route through me to, to the destination, then I will not allow you to. Uh, reverse routing, okay? Uh, C routes through B to A, then B, hey, I don't route to me, okay? I will tell you my distance infinity. Because I, I, I rely on you to teach me, okay? So that's why it's called reverse. I put in the reverse. reverse direction, so it's unreachable, okay? And by this way, we can solve partially the problem, but actually we can show that this not, does not completely solve this come to infinity point, okay? Uh, there are more common cases, like a multi-pass rules, that can still trigger this issue, right? But at least this will mitigate this issue, right? So it will try to speed up partially the convergence, okay? All right, any questions? Yes, yeah, this terminology you need to remind me. Okay, maybe later we will test you, what is point in the reverse, right? or which solution can speed up convergence, etc. right? So you need to know the concept here. All right, so far we are talking about the distance factor right, problem, okay? So we, were, we are also interested in, uh, let me see. We're also interested in, uh, yeah, so the link state routing, right? So this is by OSPM, okay? So what, what does link state do and what's the difference from distance vector, right? So here, let's take a look. Uh, before doing that, let's take attendance. Okay, I think the attendance is not so good somehow. Uh, we will sample some students. Okay, and then we will. So this time we will mainly uh, sample, you know, 534. Okay, because we have been sampled uh, 334 quite uh, extensively. L let me find my mouse somehow. When you do zoom, the mouse is kind of losing track. Yeah. And uh, we will start from the second name and uh, skip two and then the next or something like this. Russia, Rish Cash. Present, sir. Uh, Himan C. Himan C? Immensely? No, I will call three times. Okay, if you don't answer, I will call. Uh, on on Jira, Jira, are you here? Jira? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Uh, Skylar, Skylar, are you here? I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Uh, Taisha, if I pronounce correctly, Taisha, are you here? He's here. Uh, okay, let me see. So, so, Tasha is here. 
but because I, I didn't hear uh, I yeah she's here yeah, okay she's with you yeah she's in the bathroom oh okay then yeah so let's take a look uh Trey Trey Nelson are you here no Trey Trey no a Rohan, a Rohan? Yes, sir. Alaya, Alaya? Alaya Robinson? Here. Okay. Uh, Ashley? Here. Okay. Let's take a look at the other list. And we will sample really fast. Okay, so here, we will this uh, Ryan, Ryan Chancellor? I'm here. Okay. Uh, Cass? Cass? Cass Francis Charlie? Cass? She's in the chat. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, all right, so I will fix the chat shortly. Okay, so let me. Uh, Brooke? Brooke, Brooke McLean? I'm here. Okay. Uh, Daniel? Here. Okay. Andy? Andy? Oh, I see Andy uh, in the chat. Okay. Uh, Ahmed? Okay, I see the chat. What? Here. Okay. Oh, sorry. Hi, I said here. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I misclicked. And uh, let me see uh, who who do I miss? Just let me know. Okay, I see one one student mentioned. Okay, I, I'm gonna fix uh, the five thirty four list. But I, I didn't call your name, so okay, so. Uh, Hammond is here. Oh, okay. So can can Hammond T confirm again? Sorry, can I confirm again? Okay, got it. Okay, so I see. So. Uh, if your mic doesn't work, you, you just uh, leave a message. Okay. Uh, if I miss any of you, just let me know. Okay. Otherwise, I think uh, uh, yeah, I will go on. Just uh, leave a new message in the chat. I will fix it. Right. So let's look at link state routing. Okay. So in link state routing, each node knows its connectivity and cost to direct neighbors. Right. So. And uh, just like before, right? You, you, of course, you know the, the connecting, whether you are connected to a neighbor and the cost. Right? So the, yeah. And each node will tell everyone else, every other node, about this information. Basically, flood, hey, my, my, this router, my, my two adjacent links, what are the cost? Okay? Yeah. So, for example, here, uh, this router is the source. For example, it will tell others, hey, if I send from here to this router, what's the cost? Send from this router, send to this router, how, how, how long is the latency? And this information will be propagated to here, okay? And then to here, right? So what does this mean? So this means that this, this distance will be, uh, you know, these three delay, let's say one, two, three, this delay will be collected into a, a so-called a packet. Okay, we'll, we'll later see the name, okay? Right, next day packet, okay? And this packet, or um, maybe for one packet for each, I just, this information will be then, that is the information, okay? Will be sent to this guy, sent to this guy, sent to this guy, sent to basically everyone using a flooding, okay? So you think about everyone is doing this, that everyone basically knows the whole topology of the network, right? So like every edge, okay? This is quite different from our uh, distance vector solution, right? It's, if you look at the distance vector, you only know the next step. Right, and you just don't know the destination and the, the next router. You don't know the entire, uh, like a topology, right? You don't know every edge, 
but in the state, everyone will probe the adjacent edge weights by right, the delay, okay? And then we'll tell everyone else about it. So then at the end, you will see this happen, right? Everyone will have a snapshot of what's the cost on each end, right? And then they can make the decision on the short pass, uh, you know, on their own without actually keeping communicating with the neighbors. So then you can use a Dijkstra to compute the shuttle path, right? because you only care about you are the single source, okay? you, how you, you send stuff to others. Okay? So how to do this flooding? Right? So first step is the flooding, how to do the flooding. Okay? So each node need to periodically generate so-called a link state packet. And the link state packet, I think we have a format, I think maybe the animation on the next page. Okay? So it will contain the ID of the node generating the LSP, right? So the source node, okay? And the direct list of direct neighbor in the cost. Right? So for example, here, uh, if you are, yeah, this, this is a source node, right? So, so these are list of neighbors, okay? What's the cost to each neighbor? Okay, so this will be uh, the content, okay? And uh, then you will have a sequence number. That's the sequence number is really uniquely identified, you know, you know, if you have a larger sequence number, it means that the previous uh, link state packet is outdated because you know your your uh, your cost may change from time to time. Okay, then if you have a new version, it's like a version number, right? You have a new version of the, the cost. Okay, then you will override the old version. Right? You will ignore the old. One, okay? And there's a time to live, right? just in case you know the packet is in the network forever. Right? So we, we allow it to uh, time to live or uh, uh, how many hops. I think then it should be digested, okay, it should not be, continue to flood, right? Because flooding is dangerous. It can keep flooding and repeatedly getting, it really, the name is flood, right? So it can cause disastrous uh, like communication. We want to limit this. So flood is actually reliable, okay? So it has an acknowledgement and retransmission, which means if you, let's say, I want to send this information to this guy, right? So I, I will make sure it's rich this guy. Otherwise I will retransmit my, my, you know, this information, my connectivity, what are my neighbors, what's the cost to each neighbor to them, okay? And uh, so again, this sequence number is like versions, right? Because, you know, maybe now the cost, link cost is three, but maybe two seconds later, the cost becomes one, right? So if uh, now a router receives both versions, I, I should choose the one, the later one, right? So the one with the larger sequence number. Okay, so we assume it will never run because 64 bits are pretty large. Okay, so you can you can think about it as one way. Okay? It never never wrap to zero again. Okay. Yeah, I see the attendance is right. So jogged, and like three students left. Next time we will we will need to take different measures. And uh, so the receiver right will then you know flare us to be the only. So basically this is because, you know, this is basically this process, okay? Of course, it's, 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 the cost is still for, for this, this router, okay, the adjacent links. But this information will be received by those routers and they will continue to forward to their routers and the flood. So this is a flood idea, okay? It's, it's a broadcast basically, okay? It's broadcast the same content until it reaches everyone, okay? It's a whole copy. And uh, it's, it, it will not go through who originally the LSP, right? So it will not go backward. It will always, always go forward, okay? If you previously, I, I received that LSP from you, I will not flood back to you, okay? So LSP also generate when the link state changes. But initially, if you first configure that, of course, no one knows the cost you need to broadcast, okay? And later, uh, you know, when the link state changes, right, which means some link cost change, okay? We also need to learn, but with a new version number, sequence number. Okay. Any questions so far before we move on? Yeah, just want to make sure everyone is on the same page. Okay. So, uh, yeah, once everyone has a whole graph, right, including each address cost in your machine, right, so then in your router, then you can run the, you know, Dijkstra's algorithm, which is the, I, I think, uh, how many of you know Dijkstra's algorithm? Or how many of you don't know Dijkstra's algorithm? Just let me know, okay? 
you can raise your hand, etc. So uh, I will see how detailed I need to introduce it. Uh, yeah, if you don't know Dijkstra, raise your hand. Okay, so then I can get a better idea. Okay, anyway, as long as some student don't know, I probably need to describe it. Okay. Let's, uh, let's go through this concept very quickly. Okay, so, so basically this algorithm is something like this. Right? So you will, you will, uh, you basically have two sets of uh, nodes. Right? So it's a set and initially it's empty. So Dijkstra is a single source shortcut. Right? So how, what's the shortcut from A to everyone basically, okay? So it's called the single source shortcut pass, right? So, uh, the idea is, it's kind of like a BFS, but, but you have the weights, right? So every two passes always have a difference in, in the less. Okay, so it's, it's unlike an unweighted graph, right? It's always one, two, three, five, six, right? How many halves? Okay. The extra algorithm, these weights can be used 3.5, et cetera, right? So, so the idea is really do BFS, but each time you grow to the next longest pass and finalize it, right? And then grow to the next longest pass. Okay, it's, it's like a, you, you grow a little bit larger, 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 okay, all the way you reach everywhere, okay? It's kind of like a BFS, but the difference is that it's weighted. So we cannot say BFS to the first half neighbors like before, right? So if you look at the breadth first search, it's pretty much like this one, okay? Uh, uh, but if starting from this source, I first reach my first half neighbors. So these three are first half neighbors. And then I reach my second half neighbors, like these two. And then I reach the third half neighbor. Okay. But unfortunately, this for you cannot do that, right? Because these are weighted acts. Okay. Maybe it's this 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. That's the longest 1.1 first, right? So the stretches one. Then you finalize this. Okay. So the idea you can do this is based on this, this intuition. Okay. So think about it. Assuming that your source to these, uh, these nodes this distance has been finalized, okay? Then basically we can find the next shortest, but right? if these nodes are not finalized okay, in the front here, right? this one that's the closest has been finalized, right? Because if this is not finalized, which means you can find an even shorter path, okay? The shorter path must pass through these ones, okay? Right? Because these are already finalized. So this will be the next shortest. The next shortest will be compared with the already finalized path, right? which one I should have, uh, route value, okay? And you will find the shortest. That one must be already, the next one must be finalized, okay? And then you can, you can, once this is finalized, you will update your, your touching node, okay? To update the, the, the cost, the shortest. Time. And then you find the next one that is shortest, okay? So this is a, like an induction kind of algorithm. Right? It's a weighted kind of uh, BFS. Right? All right, so let's take a look at uh, the idea. Right, so let's assume that we, we, we start from S, which means we want, we, now the A, the, the router, right? The router A has the whole picture, okay, of the weights. But now we want to find uh, the path to B, C, D, E, F, how we run, okay? So in step zero, in iteration zero, okay, what we do is, uh, uh, you know, the shortest path, right? So it's A, D, right? this is the first shortest one. A, B, a, uh, you know, A, C, they are longer, two and five. So the next shortest one is uh, A, D. Okay. So, so we will say, we will put a D into the finalized distance. Okay, uh, A, D, so A to D is finalized. Okay. And then we will update, update what, uh, because now D is touched. We need to see, hey, D's adjacent edge can be coming to play. Let's say D to C is three, like this C three plus one is four. But originally, if you just look at A, this is in five. So I will update uh, the these using these adjacent neighbor, right? To update, okay? We will update from five to four. A to C now becomes four instead of five. But once this is updated, these are the, you know, so, so here are the distance to everyone else, right? So initially, if you only have A, A to B is two. That's why this is two. A to C is five, okay? Now, because we touch B, D, so one plus three is updated to four, route through D instead of directly goes through A, okay? Route through D to C. And this is, uh, to D is one, right? This is why it's final, okay? Then E and F, they are not directly reachable, initially infinite, okay, to A. So the next step in the iteration one, what we are doing is we find the current smallest one, okay? 
two, five, one, infinity, infinity. Of course, we will, we will, we will choose one. Right? And this one, this D, uh, right? so, so this is the smallest among these five values. Okay? So this is smallest, D will be picked and moved to here. Right? Okay? So this is the first step. And then we reach the second step. The second step is now, you know, this thing, so this D has been finalized. You can delete this column. And next, let's look at who's the next closing. This is a two, four, one, two. Okay. So this two is because you know uh, now we reach d, d to e is one. Right? So one plus one is two. Infinity of d to two, rows through d. Okay. And now we, we, we can see, hey, b and e both are two. Right. So we can take either b or e to be the next one. Okay. Here we choose to to take e. All right. So if we do this. If we do this, the next attractive part, which is E, is found there, right? And then you will look at these adjacent ads. Okay, for example, E now can reach F to two, right? So this becomes two, right? E is to the east cos it, uh, to, uh, A to E is two, right? And the E to F is two, right? So this should be updated to four from infinity, okay? Right. And in the meanwhile, uh, you know, one, 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 right? To C is three. But previously, it's a one plus three is four. Okay, now it's up here. Right. So now let's take a look at uh, who should be the next we choose. Of course, you know, uh, we already take E, so this column will be two. Okay. Now among the rest, we will look at uh, uh, two, three. Right? These two columns deleted. Four. Of course, we should choose. Uh, it's very clear we should choose uh, two. This is close, the next one. So what will happen is that we will choose B here. Okay. Of course, when you do this, B is finalized. Okay. Uh, let me let me erase some of this. Okay. So th this link, B, this link is fun. Right. So it's two. Right. And once we touch B, we will, we, will, we need to look at whether some adjacent edge can make distance smaller. Like B to D is two. Right. But of, of course, A to D is already one. So that's no point to do. It. B to C is three, but that's no point because we already find the cost that totally is three. Okay. A to B, B to C is five, is three. right? So there will be no update to other distances, I believe. Right. So next, we, uh, if you, you take B, then uh, what is left is C and F. Right. C is three, F is four. Of course, we will take C. Okay. C will go to. Right. So the next will be C. And the cost is three, one, one, one. Okay. And uh, this C will not make your by uh, routing through the, the new node C will not make your distance F shorter because distance is one, one, two, right, which is four. Okay. Route through C will have a five to each one. Okay. So then finally, you take it. Then, then finally, you basically have a uh, have a shortest pass tree. Right? So it's it's. By these orange ads. Okay, whenever you route, you will always uh, sorry, route with the orange ad. For example, uh, for example, if you want to route from A to C, you will take this path. Okay, but if you want to route to B, you will take this path. If you want to route to F, you will take this path. Okay, so, so once this this is uh, finished, you exactly know how you route to your destination. Okay. Any questions so far? Yeah, I see the number of students dropped again. Right? So, yeah, maybe next time we take attendance at the end. Okay. All right, so let's take a comparison between the OSP. Right? So, oh, there's a, another solution called uh, IISIS. Okay, so there's some, uh, so both of them are next state routing. Okay, so, but there are some difference. Okay, we, we just described the OSP, right? So, but, uh, ISS and OSP are both based on this idea, okay? uh, links, links state. Okay? But there's some difference, right? So usually within your, you know, you know AS, you, you favor OSPF. Okay? Actually, OSPF probably most used, even uh, better, uh, more commonly used than the RAP. Okay? So it's favored by companies and data centers, while ISIS is favored by uh, you know, internet service providers. 
And the OSPF, because you know it's your own AS, right? You have a lot of option features, optional features you can configure. Right? But ISS is simpler, right? Because it's an ISP, right? One simpl simplicity, just like router, uh, you know, store and forward, right? So it's the last net net overhead and supports more devices, right? Simple. Okay. Don't don't make things too complicated. Okay. OSPF uh, is built on top of IPv4, right? So uh, it's itself basically routes for IPv4, like for, for those kind of flooding, okay? So uh, if you wanna, uh, I think uh, the current version is V2, okay, OSP FV2. If you wanna uh, IPv6, then you probably need a, you know, a OSP FV3, okay? Otherwise the uh, link state, uh, you know, packets are sent through the IPv4 by default, right? RSI actually uses something quite different, right? So it's it's not tied to IP. It's based on something else. So it can work with both IPv4 and IPv6, which means that you you don't need to choose different versions, right? So here our OSPF is dependent on IP. So for IPv4, you use OSPF v2. Okay. For IPv6, you use OSPF v3. Okay. So both are link state. It's different from the RIP port. So, uh, so they have also have different organizational structure. Right? So for OSPF, usually uh, uh, there's many area networks organized around overlapping areas. Okay, and there will uh, will be a center piece of the area called area zero. That's the core network. Okay, everyone will overlap with this. Okay, so that you, you basically a if you want to route to area three, right, you will go to area zero. The reason we make break them into multiple smaller areas is because you think about it. Right? So you are flooding. If you look at the previous uh, animation, I, I think we should go to this animation. Uh, yeah, somehow, let's go to this. So uh, why it's not? Yeah. So you can see here, right? So everyone has a piece of all the information. That would be crazy. It will grow quadratically. If you you don't you, you have a very big network, right? so basically make, making them into small areas will break down. Okay, in each sub network, uh, each area you just need a that snapshot within the area. Okay, it will make it more scalable. Okay, so ISIS is a uh, you know organized at two levels. Okay, the level two is the backbone. Right? So this the level one, this level two. It's kind of similar, right? So but uh, there are some additional components. Like so those between level one and level two, this is more local, this is more global. Right, Between them is for the level one, two. Okay, so these are different concepts that you should be aware of. And because of the time limitation, I will just end here. So there's a, some time complexity, there's a trade offs between different solutions. Okay. But in general, uh, you know, OSPF, the link state, is more widely used than the RIP protocol using this one. Okay. Next time, we'll check the uh, BGP. Okay. So that's the end of this class because we've timed it up. Uh, any questions? I will be here for one more minute. Okay. And uh, today we have labs. Okay, don't forget to be in the lab. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, have a good weekend, everyone. Okay. Uh, I don't see any questions. Right. So then I will disconnect. Feel free to send me email or question. Okay. Have a good weekend.